Mimi Cat. Andy Cat. Oh, God, you look amazing Thank today. You so much. But I did promise you, I feel like the more and more we meet, the more and more I kind of evolve. I think so. And you're evolving just right, my dear. I love all the chill work. I look I beautiful, it. right? I kind of I kind of envy it. Yeah, I mean, there's to be honest, when we when we first kind of came up with the idea of a duo, there's been a lot of interest, like record labels I've had on the phone, people really supporting the idea. You have no idea what came to my end. But I still don't feel like I've quite got the look. Okay. And I feel like I need to be kind of mimi catted up. I think we can work that out. And we're going to do it. And by coincidence, we have a... Where is it? Where, where is it? Where's our little makeup kit? Is it kit? here? Is it here? Is it here? Oh! Where is it? I'm the makeup artist today. You're the makeup artist. But I think while you're doing my makeup, we need to find out a little bit more about each other okay. to see if this partnership is really hmm. going to work and if we're going to get the success that I think we deserve. Right. Okay, shoot me up. So this is the first time I've ever had my makeup done. You're going to make me look really pretty. I am. I'm going to try at least. Let's go. So where oh, are we starting? What do we have? So we have eyeshadows. We have blush. We have the brushes. And we do have, let me see, what would it, what else we have? Oh, we have red lipstick. Mm. Oh, I love this color, by the way. It's a lovely I would color. Say I chose Andy, it myself. I'm really jealous about this right now. Okay, so I love this color. And okay, so is this the yeah lash and brow? Okay, I'm gonna hit you up. Where do we start? So we're going to start by the eyes. Okay, the eyes. Okay, the eyes. So and you got beautiful blue eyes. Let me see what I can hit you with. Oh, okay, this one is close. It's brand new, guys. You know, I just bought it uh, before Andy came. Yeah, I did. I absolutely didn't. And my nails are completely useless for this kind of shit. But, um, sorry, I just said, uh, uh, what was this going to work? Oh, uh, okay. So, so let me like see. Oh, I'm going to hit you with this purple tone. We're like, going purple, guys. Yeah, this is like a tutorial for uh, makeup, for uh, blue eyes, because I do uh, do my own makeup a lot of the time. Uh, so, I'm kind of a pro right now. Let's go. On me, at least. And while we're doing it, I want to find out about yeah. Mimi Kitten. I okay. want to find out about Mimi Cat in childhood. Okay. So, Mimi Cat in childhood was very similar to Mimi Cat now. I think that I lost a bit of Mimi Cat in of my childhood. Uh, in my teenage years, during my teenage years. I was not confident at all as a teenager. Really? Yeah. I you know I, ha I had all these complexes with my body because I had a big booty booty, yeah. And I have big boobs. Uh, and all of my friends were skinny, no boob, uh, and no booty. And I thought, you know, I was different than what boys liked at the time. And I didn't deal very well with that. I was very insecure. I had this major crush uh, on my best friend, which didn't feel the same. So I was not correspondent, okay? So I suffered a lot. And I read a lot. I was so melancholic as a teenager. I didn't, you know, I just didn't enjoy life enough at my teenage years but i did enjoy my life during my university in college years i did i can say i didn't because i did i you know partied a lot made a lot of new friends you know danced my ass off most of the time Dang. so yeah i enjoyed my life yeah and i studied in two different courses so i had like six years of university, which was really, really cool. Where did but you go to my, university? Well, I went in to the university in Coimbra first, which is my hometown in Portugal. And it's a city in the middle of the country, mostly. I'm going to do this, I know. Um, and uh, then I went to study in Caldas da Rainha, which is uh, a city closer to the sea um mm. and closer to lisbon and then after that i moved to lisbon with my boyfriend slash husband because we're not married but but we've been together for four, for 15 years now so mm. it's almost like a marriage <laughs> so i call him my, my husband it's n it doesn't make much sense to call him just a boyfriend it's very reductive. are we waiting for him to put a ring on it no i no? don't think we're going to get married honestly i don't feel like i need the marriage you know it makes no sense to me. Um, there's nothing to change about this. Sorry, did I did I poke you right? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just really not used to having my makeup done, but I'm actually quite enjoying it. I've also never done an interview with okay. my eyes closed before. Am I, am I being too rough with no, the, no, the no, brush? No, no, no. You're doing amazing. I'm sorry. I have no idea because I usually make up myself. You know, I just don't usually uh, do makeup on other people. Sorry, I'm trying to smoke it so that you don't look like a clown. I always think because uh, believe it or not Mimi I am single right now okay I know it's hard to believe okay. 
Okay. But I always think Such like a good catch. when you're like when you find love, you don't need a certificate or a or a ring to kind of prove yeah. that love. It's it's what it means between exactly. you and the person you're with. That's exactly the way I see it. I have absolutely no need to have something official more than what I already have. So, you know, the 15 years together through ups and downs is more than official for, for me. So no need for anything else at this point. But I'd love to know, like, how did you get over the confidence issues? Because I also suffered from mm -hmm. kind of confidence issues when okay. I was growing up. Right. I also had a big booty and big boobs. Okay. Um, still do. Um, but how did you get over the confidence issue? Because now when you go out on stage, mm -hmm. I mean, has it like, has singing helped you get over that? Is it the talent? Like what changed? I don't know. I just, I just think that I got over the fact that I loved a boy that didn't love me, and you know, I just started to enjoy life as it was. Um, and it was a big part of me saying, you know, just, you know, just so stupid. I'm just thinking about this boy that doesn't love me back, just wasting all this time and all these tears crying for him. Uh, and then actually, we dated because it was my best friend. We dated for like two months, and we said, damn no, we're not right for each other at all. So just let's let's you know enjoy our lives apart from each other as boyfriend and girlfriend because this is not working so i think that from that point on i understood well there's no point in suffering for someone that actually doesn't feel the same for you um and then i you know just stopped looking and waited for my for my husband you know it, it just appeared and it was amazing because I knew what true love was meant to be and oh. how love how love is supposed to be. You know, it's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just supposed to be real. Um, and real comes with the, all the bad and the good and, and all that. So I just take it as it is. You know, I'm just grateful that I have him um, and all the things we've been through together, which is a lot in 15 years. It's very intense. So you're studying. You've got your confidence. Where did kind of the musical journey start for you? I think, uh, well, it started very, uh, on, a, on a very early age, you know, I recorded my first album when I was nine, uh, and I had no idea of what I was doing, I just knew I loved singing, and I loved, you know, singing in my bedroom mostly, because I was not confident at all on stage, you know, when I went to see Valde Canso in 2001, it was a shame, honestly, <laughs> because I was not confident, I spent most of the time looking at the floor, and you know, blinking my eyes off, and you know, it, you, you could tell that I was not ready for it. Um, so it took me, you know, a few years to, to understand what I was as an artist on stage. And then I went into a band, um, and in that band, I started to develop my stage persona because I do have a persona. Um, the moment I hit the stage, I'm not me anymore. I'm just, I just let her take over. It's Mimika taking over, not Marisa, you know. So um, it's very interesting to actually allow yourself to have that second personality coming over. I feel a bit crazy though sometimes, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> but where, like, where did you say like the Mimi Cat personality? Mm -hmm. Like, when did she first come out? Well, it, it was in that band uh, because that band was very cinematic as well and very theatrical. And I start, started working on that side of my persona at that time. Um, and I understood that I, I could be so many different things if I approached that in that way. Uh, I, 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 couldn't, I didn't have to be just like myself. I could be somebody else and be things that I would never be on a daily basis. Uh, and it was amazing once I understood the magic of creating uh, an outside of the body experience, you know, watching yourself being somebody else. Um, and it was throughout those years, you know, I spent six to eight years in that band working on it. And when I thought I was ready, I just left to create my project, to do my own thing, do my own songs. Um, and, you know, just, you know, just put, it, put myself out there. Was that scary going out on your own? Well, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it was something that I wanted to do so bad because I was sick of the band. I know I just was tired of it. I'm not a band person at all. Uh, I, I very, I'm very I'm much of a control freak, so I like to do things my way. I'm very bossy with my own shit. Um, so it doesn't work very well in a band, as you may imagine. Uh, and I was, n I was not very, I don't know, I, I don't think I met up for bands, honestly. I'm too selfish sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I left the band, then I did my own thing, and I didn't felt like I was afraid of it. You can open your eyes now, sweetie. 
I want to look in. <laughs> oh damn! Oh, does it look? Oh, it looks so bad, Andy. I'm sorry. I I don't have another brush to smoke it. Have I got smoky eyes? I'm trying to. Let me check. What, look at me. I'm trying to. It's not coming out perfectly. I'm sorry. This is not the right brush for it. And I, I feel not... beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. We do not have um, mascara, which would be useful. Lash and brow. But we do have this one. Let, let me I check think this might, this, be, one this might be a, a clear mascara. And yeah, there might be. Is. I'm sure there's a reason why we went for clear and yeah. not black. Okay, let me do your your. Um, this is where I'm going to flinch. So if you do... Okay. I'm a bit of a flincher when it okay. comes to people going I won't in my touch, eyes. Okay, I won't touch your your uh, your lashes, but I will have to compose this this eyebrow, Andy. So I I want to know, like, when you're not being mimic out on stage, mm -hmm. what is home life like for you? Like, how do you chill? Like, do you like to properly get away from the stage mm -hmm. and and kind of pretend that you're a normal person? But I am a normal person, Andy. You know, it, it this this stardom thing that people think that artists have. The moment I leave the stage, I'm back to normal. You know, uh, and I had this conversation with Selena from Austria, and she feels exactly the same. Um, it's the stage that brings the magic. You know, the the people and the lights. And on the minute you you feel the lights hitting your face. It's just something happens, I don't know, something switches and um, you just have to enjoy the moment, really. It's your moment and it doesn't happen in, in, happen anywhere else. So at your house, it doesn't happen. You, feel, you absolutely don't feel like a star when you're at home. Uh, well, at least I speak for myself. But, you know, the moment I hit the stage and I feel those lights, you know, just something happens. And after that, you're back to normal. You're back to being yourself. You're back to having responsibilities and you're back to having kids in my case and having to deal with laundry and dishes and all that. So it's... No, yeah. me and my cat does our own laundry. I do, most of the time. I love least. it, but there's, there's no like diva qualities about you at all. You're so down to earth. Well, yeah, I think that most, most of us are, don't you think? I think that most of us... Trust me, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not, okay. Not everyone. Uh, yeah, well, I believe so. They're not not everyone, but I think that most of us, or, I, or at least most of the people that I know, um, are very down to earth. You know, okay, you're you're you have like this special job because it's a special job to to bring, you know, uh, something special to to people's life. Music is like that. You know, you're creating a connection with people, and that's a, a special job for me. Uh, but other than that. You still have to eat. You still have to shit. You still have to do everything that you take a shower. You know, it's just normal life. I don't see why, and I don't understand the the, the diva or artistry kind of life. I don't understand because I don't have it. I never had. I don't think I will ever have, have it, because I do like a normal life, and I do like the fact that I can go outside with my hair messed up and not having makeup on, and you know, just be a regular person. So what would we if if I was going to come out and we were just going to hang out as as buddies? Mm -hmm. Like what would we be what would we be doing? Well, probably we were going to eat out somewhere. Now we're I talking. <laughs> it's, I love it when the conversation gets around to the food. Out. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. Actually, I think that most of the socialization happens when you eat. So at the house, we speak a lot while we're, we're eating. So there's no TV uh, on most of the time. We speak out when we eat. So. All of my buddies usually, and my stylist is my best friend, so we, we talk most of the time while we eat or while we're, you know, doing regular stuff, like, you know, just putting gas on the car and just walking, driving somewhere. I don't know, probably we would drive somewhere to go eat and then we'll talk the rest of the way and while we're eating. I think that's one of the, the, the most interesting things to do with your buddies. One of my favorite things, actually, yeah. is just driving around in a car, yeah. not knowing where you're going yeah. and listening to, to music. music. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, just, you just talk. I think that when you connect with people, you know, even the silence is not awkward. You know, there, it's okay to, for each of you to have your own thoughts and just to be lost in somewhere for a couple of minutes. It's, it, it doesn't feel awkward. I think that that's the moment when you know that you're friends with someone and that you feel comfortable with someone that you don't have to make conversation and you feel just okay to talk whenever you want to about whatever you want to, even if it's a silly thing or, you know, even discussions. It's so cool to, to hang around with people in the car just doing normal stuff and to go eat out and then you just, do, you know, 
I don't know. That's it. That, 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 that's what I would do with you, honestly. I mean, I feel like I know you now. Oh, and um, where like tell us about where you, like I don't need an address or anything. Mm. Um, we're not looking on Google Maps, but like what area, whereabouts in Portugal do you live? Because I have been to. Like, I love Portugal. Mm-hmm. As a country, I love the people. It really opened my eyes when we went there for Eurovision yeah. in 2018. You saw a different country than what you oh, it be. was yeah, it was amazing. I'm waiting to be adopted uh, by someone from Portugal, okay. or to marry someone from Portugal. I'm just going to put that out oh, there. Oh, we have beautiful men there. Um, I did fall in love in Portimao actually. Oh, I can't remember his name, but I did fall in love. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, tell us about where you live. I live in Amadora, which is a city. Uh, really close to, to Lisbon. It's in the same district, actually. I live like 15 minute car drive from the center of the, the city, from center of Lisbon, uh, which is like a quiet place. It's like um, an, an old neighborhood uh, where most of the people are old people and I love uh, old people neighbor neighborhoods because it feels like, um, it feels like nothing, you know, extraordinary it feels so normal uh, and it feels so quiet and I do love those kind of uh, of places to live in I listen to birds because it has a lot of trees it has a lot of parks and greens around it and I do love it um, but I've lived 50 almost no almost 12 years in the center of Lisbon and I got a little sick of it because you know I lived here for so long we were always switching but we were always in the center of the, city, of the city and with all the tourists uh, with all the tourists coming and it just got super crowded and we went away uh, from that and probably we're gonna buy a house somewhere uh, even further away from the, the center of the city in, in the future for our kids that will be so nice for the kids though, yeah because yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. Uh, two kids under four yeah. under five yeah under four yeah. under four and yeah. it's as I've got older I find that peace and quiet mm-hmm. becomes uh, more important yeah. to me yeah. and when you're younger like you were saying when you're a student mm-hmm. you know you loved kind of like the the busy life but yeah. sometimes it does get a bit too yeah. busy yeah, yeah it does and the noise actually you know you, you start to uh, acknowledge the noise because before th- the noise is part of your life yeah yeah but then afterwards you start to acknowledge the noise and you just don't feel like it you don't don't like it that much and when you have kids you start to think about uh, the benefits that they would get from a quieter life, from you know going home and listen only to birds and you know just getting dirt all over their hands and all over their their clothes and just being normal kids, just to discover new things, just like climb climb trees and stuff like that that they don't get to do in the city. You know they don't even get to play a lot outside, uh, other than in parks. But you know outside of the house we have like this little square with no as uh, exit. But I would love my kids to play out, but I'm afraid as hell that they will play out because some car might come, you know, a little faster to the square. So, you know, I, I just feel like I need some more quiet place for them. It's kind of like all the things that you probably did when you were younger. You're now yeah. scared. Yeah, You're yeah, turning yeah. into your mum, basically. Completely. That's what's happening. Yeah, and I know my, my husband will divorce me once I turn into my mum. <laughs> Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Well, let's hope not. Because it's turning into some, you know, some form of his dad or granddad or whatever. So I'll have to bear with him too. But I'm I'm finding I'm turning into my mum now. Because I think sure. we're like in the same age bracket, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing things now where I think, oh God, that's something that my mum would have said. <laughs> and it's scary, but it's kind of nice because you have that link like to your parents as well, I think. And for me, that's, that's in, you know, my mum's a very important figure in my life. Yeah, and, and mine too, you know. If I am in music, it was because of my mom. You know, she also sang uh, when she was little and her parents didn't uh, allow her to pursue the dream. So she was invited to sing in the radio uh, because at the time singers sang in the radio uh, in Oporto. In and my grandparents said that she wouldn't go they didn't allow her so she was frustrated all the way so she wanted to be a singer but she never had the chance so when she understood that I could be a singer she you know just did whatever it was in her power to you know just to get me through it so, so you're also doing this for your mom yeah as well. absolutely like living your mom's dream. yeah 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 I, I wrote a song for her that's called gave me love it's on my platforms and it's on, on YouTube um, because she she was the the main reason behind my career honestly so she's a very important picture in my life too oh wow. what was your mom's name yeah Maria 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 Isilda oh Maria Isilda. yeah that's that's my mom's name 
Oh, and is she, she is able awesome. to come here? No, so she will stay with my kids. So my kids are staying with them, with both my mom and dad. And, and she's very close to them. So, you know, they just feel like, you know, I'm not sure that they're missing us at all. <laughs> They just I think that they're just happy that they don't have us there to annoy them and to say don't do this and don't do that you got to change and so they just let them be whatever do whatever they want so I think that they're happy with them. I, I hope she films their reaction when you're on TV next yeah, I week. Hope, I hope too but I think I think she won't. <laughs> I'm hoping but I think she won't. She would be like this crying the whole time. Yeah. Oh, well, as long as she's not like my mum with a mobile phone, because uh, she really can't use it. No, my mum sucks too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the <laughs> amount of calls I get from my mum saying, this message has come up on my phone, like, yeah. what do I do? I'm like, mum, there must be someone else that can yeah, help yeah, you same, with this. You just, you, just need to, you just need to learn. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes we do like to go and socialise. I do like to have a good night out. So yeah. what spots, kind of, it, maybe, maybe we'd go into, like, the centre of Lisbon, mm-hmm. but where would we hang out for, like, some, you know, some drinks and some music well where's your favorite spot that's the thing i don't go out at night usually you know i do go out at night for dinners and usually they stay uh, we stay there all night just dancing because me and my friend who's here my stylist uh he has this terrace in, a, in his house so usually parties happen in their house in their in his house and we dance and we party so but i would say that the most famous bar in Lisbon to go out which I haven't been is the the Lux the Lux a lot yeah the Lux is near the river and I haven't been to the Lux and everybody's shocked because I haven't been there because when I came to Lisbon I stopped uh, going out at night usually um, so I don't go out at night much it's it, I do like to party and I do love to dance but I don't go out much you know I do dance at parties at home with friends and, and all that so the first time I actually danced in a party with, uh, you know, in a club, was at this these pre parties in, in many years. Really? Yeah, yeah. Usually I dance at home with with friends and dinners. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So uh, well, we need to get your friend then because he sounds like he's a bit more of a party. Oh, animal. it is. And we need to go and visit the. But, but don't get me wrong, I am a party animal when I'm partying. But don't get me wrong. You know, you w- were you in Madrid? You were. Uh, I was in Madrid. Yeah. Didn't you see the party? I, I'm a party animal. Don't get me wrong. I just need the right place and the right and the right company the right as company, well. Yeah. It's the right company yeah, for a party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how am I looking? Well, what do you think, girls? <laughs> we're missing the lips. Oh, we're missing the oh. lips. This is where it all comes together. Yeah, yeah. Now you can't speak, Annie. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. You're do just gonna have to for talk. You. So let's open up your mouth like you were just like ah, oh. just like that. Yeah, very natural opening of the mouth. As you can imagine. Can you turn to me, please? Yes, thank you. I'm going to try to not make you look like a clown with your mouth. So, guys, I'm not an expert on makeup, but I do do my own makeup most of the time. Um, although this time it won't happen. It would be the, the guys from... Can you open a little bit more? Yeah, sorry. Uh, the guys from Moroccan Oil, they will do our hair and makeup, and I think it will look pretty awesome. But I usually don't m- do makeup on other people, so I'm hoping that I do not mess this up a lot. I'm sorry. Although, I think that I might be doing a better job than some of the makeup jobs that people have done on me. That's why <laughs> I started doing my own makeup, you know, because I, I, the, the worst time, I was at this TV show, and the girl did me a makeup, like I looked like a drag, but on a bad way, because drag makeup usually is so good, but she made me look like, I don't know, I looked like a guy with a wig because I was wearing black hair at the time. How do you say that, eh? <laughs> you know, and she she did just such a bad jo- bad job that I thought, damn, I'm not letting anyone else t- touch my face on a TV show ever again. But I but I did, and I was very lucky after that because she literally was the worst. Andy, oh my God, I'm so nervous about your reaction to this. Oh my. Don't speak, Andy. Don't speak. Don't speak. I know what you're saying. Oh God. Lips are the worst. Close your mouth now. Oh my God. (laughs) I'm missing so many spots. That's all you were saying. That really that reminds me of school times. 
Mm. Yeah, like that. Okay, open up. Okay. Oh, oh my god. I'm nervous about this. Andy, what you got to you got to look at yourself. Well, I don't know because I think there's I think there's something missing maybe because we can't have a bald oh. Andy cat. <laughs> Oh, you gotta let me put it on you because you're not gonna be able to. Let me see where we've got feather, feather and everything. Oh, oh my god, you really went all the way with this. Okay, I'm, I'm serious. To I'm serious about this duo. Okay, okay. Oh god. <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, where is it? I, ha I have to find the right spot, otherwise you're gonna look like I don't know, crazy. <laughs> I love the color. Oh guys, you're amazing. Oh, and it helps that you're bold, actually. What? How am I looking? Wow. Well, you, you just, if you had the mascara on, you would look pretty awesome. I'm really? Tell you that. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so up for getting on that stage with you now. I feel like. Oh, my God. I got to take you to the stage with me now. Yeah. I feel like this partnership could work, this duo. Definitely. We're still, we're still missing one. You know that you have, we have spot for one extra, so... Would you come with me? I'm there. The I'm there. Stage? I think you just need to change my change my badge, okay, so that I can get kind okay. of backstage. I think I'm definitely going to take you with me. Yeah, because we want to make sure we get those twelve points. Yeah, Portugal, absolutely. Really, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andy, thank you so much. For no, no, time. thank you so much. It's been nice to get to know yeah. more about you, mm -hmm. and I'm seriously down for coming. And we'll, we're going to have one of these parties on the chairs. We'll get your friend okay, involved. I promise we're going to get to the Lux together. We're going to go to yeah, the Lux, the room, and yeah. uh, we'll go and find me a Portuguese husband so that I can oh, live there for a while. Oh, I can. I, that I can well help. Are you a good wingman? Yeah, yeah, I am. No, I, I bet you are. I bet <laughs> I you are. I am. That, that I'm good at. Yeah. <laughs> Mima Cat, thank you so much. Uh, we well, we will catch up with you yeah, again. Yeah. Um, but it's been so nice just to watch your journey as well, kind of from uh, Festival de Cannes South. So you're really, really embracing it. And we need to ask people to vote for you in the semi final. Well, yeah, I suck at this. I suck at campaigning, but I'm gonna <laughs> but do I, it for you. Then. But I do want to to you know to thank everyone for the support. It's been amazing. You know, people are being so lovely to me and so kind and so sweet. Uh, we just released a musical video for the song yesterday evening, and it's been crazy. You know, the comments are being so so nice. So thank you guys for all the support. You know, make sure that you follow the artist you love, not only me, but if you like my act the most, please vote. But if you like other acts, uh, the other acts, you know, just go for whatever, you know, you like the most. We're all giving it our best. So, yeah, just support the artists, you know, just support uh, whoever is in, is in this competition that, you know, fits more your taste. So, yeah, stay safe and be fun, you know, and just have fun with all the process, you know. No, be kind. Yeah, and we know uh, you're making Portugal very proud. And guys, uh, stay tuned for the first Andy Cat Mimi Cat album yeah, uh, coming yeah, out yeah. shortly. We're, we're Full of eight, 80s classics. Well, not 80s, maybe uh, 30s and 40s. Oh, we're going vintage. Yeah, we're love going the sound vintage, of that. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. It's Mimi Cat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I guys. love you. Oh, I love you too. Oh.